we look at the revolutions of 1848 in Europe today. A few days before the February Revolution broke out in France, Alexis de Tocqueville told the French Chamber of Deputies, we are sitting on a volcano. Don't you understand that the earth trembles? There is a storm on the horizon. Before long, the storm lashed the lands of France, particularly Paris. In fact, on 24th February 1848, massive demonstration following days and indeed months of unrest in uh, France, in Paris in particular, obliged Louis Philippe to abdicate from his throne after a reign of 18 years and the Second Republic was proclaimed in France. A provisional government was set up and Lamartine was elected the president of this uh, new French Republic. In early March, the wave of revolution spread beyond the borders of France to Vienna, to Budapest and Prague within the Austrian Empire, to Milan, Venice and Rome in Italy, to Bavaria, Baden and even Berlin in Germany. Everywhere there was popular outburst of emotion, massive demonstration in the Austrian capital of Vienna on 13th March 1848 indicated that the bastion of conservatism in Europe for more than half a century had been stormed. Eric Hobsbawm, the noted English historian, has indeed seen 1848 as a possible date of world revolution. He noticed its impact in far off Brazil or Colombia in South America. Whether we take that to be entirely true or not, there is no doubt that what 1848 witnessed in Europe was essentially a European phenomenon. It has been suggested that the two extremities of the continent, namely Russia to the east and England on the West were not particularly affected by these revolutions. It is true Russia was not much affected by this, though troubles were brewing in Russia that became later uh, uh, clear, say in the late 50s and the 60s. But the British government was very busy uh, tackling the impact of the Chartist movement. There is no doubt then that these were the most widespread revolutions that Europe had experienced so far and also perhaps the least successful. These revolutions were led mainly by the liberal middle class but what is significant is that at a later stage even a rudimentary working class participated in the demonstrations and in the insurrections that characterized developments later in 1848. The fact that the revolutions were not enduring success had prompted Trevelyan to comment that 1848 was a turning point in European history when Europe failed to turn. How do we characterize this uh, revolutions. It has been suggested uh, that these were romantic revolutions. The romantic part evoked the barricades, the poets and the poems which were recited during demonstrations and the heroic deeds of men like Mazzini, Garibaldi, Kossuth or Manin. On the other hand, a second characteristic 
uh, which is some historians have uh, found in these evolutions is that it was a work of a few dilettantes. An anecdote very clearly indicates this. A French revolutionary looking at the crowd on the street from his window shouted that I am their leader and I must follow them. You now this caricature of some of the leadership of this revolution endows it with it with a, a little uh, mockery, but this may not be the entire truth about the revolution, and it, of course it is not. Thirdly, at another level, the German revolution had been characterized as a revolution of the intellectuals. Well, the suggestion is that there was a hair-splitting uh, debate about certain uh, not very substantial issues while these intellectual leaders lacked the basic, you know, kind of a sound political sense which could deal with the uh, issues of practical politics and this related particularly to the unification of uh, Germany. More recently, however, there had been a movement away among the historians to look at not the urban areas but the rural areas as well and the participation of even the peasant masses. The demonstrations, particularly in, uh, during the latter period of the revolutions towards the end of uh, 1848, did involve some uh, brutal repression and suppression. And uh, we have some figures about the kind of people who died. And between 1849 and 1851, there had been a whole number of uh, local, uh, rather obscure leaders artisans, craftsmen, local uh, activists, and they had been brought into focus by historians uh, lately. The revolutions of 1848 came in different countries at almost the same time. It is possible to detect an uh, influence of identical ideologies in, in these uh, uh, ideologies behind most of these revolutions, yet these revolutions were different. Arising in each country out of a peculiarly uh, unique context. The issues might superficially appear to be the same, but the contexts were different. What one probably noticed was a large-scale coincidence in Europe. The revolutions did have certain similarities, though they did, took place in, in different countries and different societies. Most of these revolutions were led by the new middle class. Uh, among them were, were merchants, men of finance, intellectuals, professionals, and, and of course the middle class politicians and the students. This is why Nehemiah had called it the revolution of intellectuals as well, generally speaking, not just with reference to Germany. Secondly, these were essentially urban phenomenon and uh, ultimately it was uh, at one time it used to be uh, believed that the countryside had not been affected, though recent historians have somewhat modified this view. A third similarity was the economic and financial crisis that was experienced in uh, most European countries in 1846-47. Uh, the, there was a run of the banks in many countries and this was climaxed by a crop failure uh, in 1846. The resultant uh, socio-economic distress uh, was transformed into political dissent and walked along with the other long-standing demands that people had been uh, developing as their agenda for uh, reform. There had been a very serious problem of this in uh, the kind of industries that there had been in Belgium, in Silesia, in Saxony, in the Rhineland, and therefore economic and social distresses did uh, 
to an extent caused the outburst of emotions in 1848 in most European countries. And a fourth uh, or, or another similarity that one can notice is the ideology. There had been uh, the impact of uh, nationalism in most areas and liberalism. In some places, there had been radicalism and also democratic aspirations were uh, seen. So there was some kind of an ideological similarity as well. But these apparent similarities did not mask the fact that there were essentially different movements coming out of different contexts. There was no central all India or uh, all, all European leadership. The leaders were local and often the issues were local. And indeed, ideologies also did not uh, have the same kind of impact everywhere. For example, when in Hungary, the nationalists led by Kossuth uh, demanded the implementation of the Magyar language. They demanded uh, autonomy for the Magyars in Hungary. They denied such autonomy and such uh, linguistic uh, freedom to other ethnic minorities like the Croats and Serbs. And this proved to be a weakness of the movement. So there were dissimilarities as well. And therefore, it is better to call it, call them the revolutions of 1848 than the revolution of 1848. We may begin to look at the revolutions first in the context of the Austrian Empire. The Austrian Empire led by Metternich was the center of conservatism uh, between 1815 and 48. After Napoleon's defeat, when we had seen earlier, reaction was seeking to establish itself afresh. Metternich assumed the leadership and indeed tried to create in Austria a hermetically sealed kind of a, an empire free from all liberal and nationalist influences, not to speak of radicalism. But the Habsburg Empire was very badly affected by the echoes of 1848. It started with a massive demonstration in the capital city of Vienna uh, uh, in, in, in March and spread very soon to other parts of the Austrian Empire. There were centers in Prague and then in Budapest. Prague was the capital of Bohemia where the Czechs were predominant and Budapest was in Hungary where the Mogyars were the uh, dominant ethnic group. Austrian provinces in Italy, Lombardy and Venice had been affected as had been the small uh, duchess and provinces ruled by Habsburg and other princes in Italy. The Austrian Empire under Metternich remained a centralized autocratic state which uh, resisted change. Political dissent, however, had always been active somewhat. On 13th of March, there had been a massive demonstration and they marched towards the land house uh, a, a, where the lower the, the, the house for the lower Austria was in session. There was a clash between uh, the police and the people and the demonstration assumed such force that it ultimately resulted in the fall of Metternich. This created a tremendous impression all over Europe but to begin with within the Austrian Empire. Metternich fell from power and went on exile to England. The, the government was bombarded by petitions uh, for administrative and economic reforms, abolition of censorship and the summoning of a central diet. The government tried to turn a deaf ear to all this, but after the fall of Metternich, there was no alternative but to accept most of these uh, demands. The fall of Metternich was followed by 
trouble that broke out elsewhere. The emperor now decided to call a constituent assembly in April. The peasants were freed from forced labor. That was one positive gain of the Austrian uh, revolution. It spread to other areas like Hungary, for example. Hungary was a constituent unit of the uh, Austrian Empire, but Hungary had its own historical uh, experience and historical past, which made the Mogyars very proud of their uh, medieval past. And there was always a craving for autonomy, if not for downright independence. Uh, the ethno-linguistic uh, Ethno-linguistic identity was very strong here and the autonomy movement uh, derived from this. Now, the existing dissent and the existing aspirations were mobilized into a veritable movement by a talented journalist named Louis Kossuth. The Hungarian Diet had already in 1830 demanded some kind of autonomy redemption right for the serfs etc but the central government at vienna which was autocratic had totally negated these suggestions for uh, reform kosuth now violated the censorship laws and tried to publish all these uh, earlier discussions that were held in the diet he was jailed as a result but was released uh, later. His writings became a major influence uh, on the autonomy movement. They also demanded a different tariff system for uh, Hungary and other reforms of a political and administrative nature. Kosuth was a radical, but there was also a moderate wing in the movement. Among other leaders were uh, Petofi, the poet, Jokai and Aroni, the literature. This is another interesting point about these movements in Europe is that creative intellectuals have very often been very integral part of the movement. Uh, the poems of Petofi had been a great source of inspiration, particularly for the student revolutionaries. The February Revolution in France and then the March 1 in Vienna acted as a catalyst for further uh, development of the Hungarian movement. On 3rd March, Kossuth uh, demanded in Budapest the introduction of a constitutional government in Hungary. He, however, felt that this hope would hardly be realized so long as there would be an aristocratic government or an autocratic government in Vienna. The fall of Metternich now created a tremendous impression and a huge procession was uh, organized where the students recited the poem of Petofi to make their demands more visibly felt. This virtually translated its, itself into a revolution and the Hungarian Diet promulgated a constitution. This constitution virtually made Hungary an independent unit within the Austrian Empire, only uh, there would be a link of the uh, emperor. Civic and religious rights were firmly established. Freedom of opinion was guaranteed. The feudal nobility were deprived of their special privileges and <clears throat> by 31st March, Vienna had to recognize the new constitution. A new government took a charge under Batiani. But Batiani was a moderate, and the government comprised aristocrats like Batiani and Sechini, moderates like Yotvos, and radicals or democrats like Lajos Kosuth. The contradiction within the Hungarian Revolution was now very apparent. Batiani sent troops to Italy to help Vienna. Obviously, this estranged the radicals and at the same time, other ethnic minorities like the Croats, Serbs, the Romanians to an extent, 
they expected that the Hungarian Revolution would also lead to their aspirations being realized. But the Mogyars said a firm no to the demand of the other ethnic minorities. And, and this, is, this was a weakness from which the leadership suffered. And at the same time, the sharp divide between the borderers and the radicals meant that the movement, that the government under Bathiani was increasingly under uh, control of the Vienna government. Yelachich was made the governor of Croatia and he laid the anti mogher sentiment. And uh, fresh uprisings in Vienna in October made things a little difficult for the Vienna government to act immediately, but they did by the end of October. Schwarzenberg was now the head of the government in Vienna. In this, by December, Ferdinand abdicated and the new emperor Francis Joseph took charge and the new emperor decided to act and act decisively. All the rights were granted in March in 1848, were now revoked and a virtual war was uh, declared. Gorgi had started the late the Hungarian war for the Mogyars. He had uh, some troops. Kosuth, in desperation, declared a republic in Hungary, of which he himself was the president. But Gorgi had succeeded in pushing the uh, Vienna Austrian troops back beyond the frontiers of but the Austrian Emperor now appealed to the Russian Emperor and with uh, about 160,000 Russian troops, the Vienna Car government succeeded in destroying the Hungarian movement and the Republic. Kosuth fled with a few uh, of his supporters and soldiers to Turkey and that is how the Hungarian Revolution came to an end. In Bohemia, the Czechs also expected to realize their aspirations. The Czechs uh, wanted a, a unitary Czech state, a, a separate state for the Czechs. And they had proclaimed what came to be known as the Bohemian Charter, which was to be a kind of a constitution for uh, the new Czech state. There would be a representative diet, fundamental civic and religious rights, and the use of Czech alongside German as the official language in schools as well as offices. The impressive victory of the liberals and nationalists, however, proved to be very transient. The leaders of the revolution did not uh, quite realize that reaction was only retreating and had not been defeated. Uh, there was a conflict between the Germans and the Czechs because the Czechs did not wish to join the Frankfurt Parliament in Germany and this alienated the Germans from the Czech cause. The Czech patriots led by Frantisek Palaki dreamt of this Czech state and still hoped to have this Czech state. But ultimately Austria recovered its ground by 1849 and uh, Radetsky, Wendischgratz and Jelacic easily suppressed the Czech movement and in Prague also, the movement resulted in failure. In Italy, which was nothing more than a geographical expression, a liberal movement had been growing since 1815. Italy, we had seen earlier, had developed the carbonary movement, for example, the secret society movement, first against Napoleonic uh, occupation, but then it continued and got linked with the uh, liberal and the nationalist movement somehow. Italian nationalism was forced to an extent during the Napoleonic and French occupation because in some parts of Italy, new French institutions, the French legal code had been introduced. But at the same time, there was a uh, rising in Italy, a uh, slow but sure desire for national unity. After 1815, the glory of ancient Rome had been relived, had been revived by the uh, literati, by the journalists, 
by the historians and in this way the intellectuals and the creative literatures try to evoke a past as the legitimation of Italy's nationhood. Between 1815 and 1848, the liberal movement gradually grew. There were several strands within the movement that conjured Italy as a nation. <clears throat> it is true, Italy was for far too long hopelessly uh, uh, divided. Therefore, Italy needed now to, to develop. One major strand in the movement was the young Italy movement of Mazzini. On the eve of 1848, it seemed that Italy could have had three different options for unity. One under the House of Piedmont uh, Sardinia, two under the Pope, and three could be laid by Mazzini and the Republicans. Indeed, after the revolution of 1848 broke out in France, there had been a fallout in, in Italy. Indeed, the first uh, insurrection took place in, uh, in, in Palermo in Sicily in January. After that, Ferdinand was obliged to grant a constitution. Then it moved to other areas. Rome, in uh, Piedmont, Sardinia, Charles Albert decided that it was his moment and he wanted to take on Austria for Italian unity, at least larger unity. <clears throat> in Lombardy, the Austrians were defeated, they were rejected. In Venice, Daniel Manin set up a republic. In Rome, also ultimately there was a republic under Mazzini. Charles Albert indeed wanted to capture Lombardy and engaged in a fight with the Austrians. But he was first defeated in the Battle of Custosa and after that finally in the naval battle of Novara. He abdicated accepting failure and defeat and was succeeded by his son Victor Emmanuel II. And a new chapter uh, was in a way open in Italy. The Republic of Manin held fast for some time but ultimately after Austria had recovered its strength totally by 1849, Manin's Republic was also overthrown. Lombardy, Venetia, and the central Italian duchies had all been recovered by Austria. Only the Mazzinian Republic in Rome held out. Garibaldi had, uh, with exemplary courage and determination, held out against the seas of Rome. Ironically, the new French president Louis Napoleon sent army to Italy to suppress the Republic of Rome because he wanted to placate the strong Catholic opinion in France. We shall, in the next uh, lecture, look at the experience of Germany in 1848 and then look at its significance and failure and shall, inter alia, examine the question whether 1848 was, as Trevelyan had long time back said, a turning point when Europe failed to turn.